During the clinical examination of a 19-year-old patient, a horizontal fracture line was detected on the labial aspect of the upper right central tooth, which ran approximately 4 mm coronally to the gingival margin. The mesiodistal width was 1 mm less than tooth 21. The gingival zenith for teeth 11 and 21 were at the same level. A sufficient root canal filling on tooth 11 was visible on the radiograph. The shade selection is performed at the beginning of the case by the dental technician using a standardized shade guide. An impression for the provisional restoration is prepared using an A-silicon putty soft material. Both putty components are kneaded homogeneously together and placed into the single-use impression tray, which was pre-coated with tray adhesive. The impression is then taken. A latex rubber dam is applied over the adjacent teeth to maintain a dry working field. The old, non-aesthetic restoration is removed completely using a 125 micrometer diamond instrument until the pulp chamber is exposed. The root canal is exposed from the palatal surface until contact is made with the root canal filling material, while removing as little tooth structure as possible. The appropriate diameter and length of the post can be determined using a radiograph. It is important that a sufficient wall thickness of at least 1 mm is preserved to prevent the risk of a perforation or weakening of the root. The root canal filling material is removed to the predetermined depth using suitable root canal instrumentation. At least 4 to 5 mm of root canal filling should remain intact for an apical seal. The post space is then prepared using the color coded parapost drills in a sequentially larger sizes until the predetermined post diameter and depth is achieved. The root canal is rinsed using sodium hypochlorite. The corresponding light transmitting glass fiber reinforced parapost fiber lux post is trial seated and inspected for proper fit inside the root canal. The post length can be shortened as needed based on the clinical situation. Parabond non-rinse conditioner is massaged into the root canal and onto the tooth surface. Excess conditioner is removed using a paper point and dried afterwards using a gentle stream of air. The mixed Parabond adhesive is applied directly into the root canal and onto the tooth structure. Excess adhesive is removed using a paper point and carefully dried afterwards using a gentle stream of air. The convenient curved root canal mixing tip allows Paracore to be applied directly into the root canal. The untreated post is coated with Paracore and cemented into the root canal. Since Paracore is dual cured, the curing light can be transmitted through the glass fibre post, reaching the Paracore material in the apex to accelerate the curing process. Without any further delay, the core buildup can be fabricated. The non slumping consistency of Paracore allows for free hand modelling of the core buildup and direct application onto the prepared tooth structure and retention head of the root canal post. The core buildup is light cured afterwards for 20 seconds per side.
An intraoperative radiograph is taken showing the glass fibre post cemented in place. The defect on the cervical margin is prepared using rotary instrumentation, while preserving as much tooth structure as possible. A self-conditioning single bottle bond is ideally suited for placing small composite restorations in this manner. A small increment of composite is applied, sculpted and polymerized. The bulk crown preparation is performed using a 125 micrometer diamond instrument. In order to protect the gingival tissue during the crown preparation, a thin retraction cord is placed into the sulcus. The preparation can now be performed effortlessly using a 40 micrometer diamond instrument. Due to the dentin-like hardness of paracore, the transition between natural dentin and the core buildup is hardly noticeable during the preparation. A traumatic compression of the gingival tissue is performed before the final impression is taken using a suitable retraction cord such as Compricord with a stable structure and a high absorption capacity. Application of a multi-component bonding system such as ART bond before the final impression seals the dentin tubuli and increases the retention of the restoration. Dr. Paul describes this as the dual bonding technique. The oxygen inhibition layer must be removed afterwards leaving no residue. Using the convenient microsystem dispenser, the wash material is easily applied directly into the mouth. Filling of the tray and syringing the wash material should be completed simultaneously. The one-step putty wash impression is performed using a finis heavy body and a finis precious light body. This precision impression material distinguishes itself by its easy readability of detail thanks to its silver pigmentation. After isolation of the preparation with Vaseline, the provisional restoration is fabricated using CoolTemp Natural. The material reaches an elastic consistency after a short duration of time in the mouth and can be easily removed from the mouth together with the preliminary impression. The unfinished provisional restoration is positioned again onto the preparation to check its fit. The inhibition layer is removed using alcohol. Excess material is removed afterwards using rotary instrumentation. The occlusion is checked and all unnecessary contact points are removed completely. The completed provisional crown is cemented using Temposil 2, a radiopaque temporary cement based on an addition reaction silicon. After a short setting time, excess material is removed. The provisional crown is carefully removed and the preparation is cleaned using a fluoride-free cleaning paste. For adhesive cementation of the permanent restoration, a dry working field is essential. Hemostasis can now be performed. A traumatic compression of the gingival tissue is performed using Compricord.
The fitting accuracy of the final all-ceramic crown is checked once again. Before cementation, the inner surface of the crown is etched with hydrofluoric acid, cleaned under running water and dried afterwards. The etched surfaces are silanized and thoroughly dried. Etching around the margins of the preparation using 35% phosphoric acid is now performed. The etchant gel is rinsed off thoroughly and the tooth is gently dried. Reapplication of parabond adhesive shortly before the final cementation significantly increases the retention of the paracore cement. The application of paracore for the cementation of posts, restorations, and core buildups guarantees an optimal monoblock bond interface between the post, cement, dentin, and crown resulting in one cohesive restoration with outstanding durability and strength. The restoration is held into place with increased pressure and the excess cement is removed afterwards. Once Paracore reaches a gel-like consistency, excess cement should no longer be removed. Residual excess cement and the retraction cord are removed using a scaler after the cement has completely cured. The occlusion is thoroughly checked afterwards. High contact points are removed and the surface is polished to a high glossy finish. Two weeks later, the post-operative clinical situation shows a successful clinical result after the application of a parapost glass fibre post, parabond adhesive and paracore for cementation and the core build-up. This comprehensive aesthetic system is the perfect foundation for a successful and secure post and core restoration.